Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له All the praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I seek forgiveness, I seek his guidance and I seek his refuge from the evil of my deeds and from the evil of my soul. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. Blessings and peace of Allah be upon him. My dear respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What are the consequences of the sins? This is the title of today's episode. Why? We are in the month of Ramadan. We are expecting the mercy of Allah to ascend upon our hearts. The forgiveness to be granted to all of us. The next to be freed from the hellfire. There are barriers. One of the top barriers is the sins. When the Muslims were fighting with the Prophet ﷺ in the battle of Uhud, and some of them ran away, and they were the top companions of the Prophet ﷺ. What Allah said about them. He said, Those who ran away from the Prophet ﷺ's companionship in the battle of Uhud, they were humiliated by some of the sins that they committed by the force of the shaitan on them in the past so sometimes you want to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you do not find that kind of support you need to feel or you need to shed the tears when the Quran is being recited but it is difficult for you why what is the reason there is a barrier between my heart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot contemplate over the verses of the Quran. I cannot understand the book of Allah. I cannot recite the Quran regularly. I cannot engage myself in a continual, uh, in a continual mentioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? What is the reason behind it? Because of some sins that you might have committed in the past, but you forgot actually to make repentance. Or your repentance was not accepted. Or still the barrier between you and Allah is still existing. Or there is still a love for the sin that is embedded in your heart. And you did not actually or you could not get rid of. My brothers and sisters, we need to look at the consequences of the evil which is embedded in the sin itself. We need to remember that the sin is something which is so heinous. Something which is greatly hated. Allah has driven Adam from the garden of paradise simply because of a sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expelled and has driven away the shaitan. He has driven the shaitan away from the garden of paradise and from his presence simply of being arrogant. Of not prostrating himself towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people they may actually spend tens of years away from the route and the proper path just because sins. He, they are addict of committing sins and they do not actually like to get it. Ibn Abbas mentioned for us some of the consequences of the sins and he said, I found out that. There are some consequences for committing sins, like a darkness in the face, a darkness in the heart, 
a hatred in the heart of the other believers when you approach some people and they just don't like you and they like actually to seclude you they don't like actually to sit with you they don't like actually to talk with you when you find a remoteness when you find distances which cannot be covered easily between you and your Lord and this is very critical my brothers it is not enough and this is very important point it is not enough to have your deeds accepted sometimes you need you have a good deed and you have a good intention and it may be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but later on this deed did not reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or did not connect you to Allah so you do not actually practice other good deeds in consequence what is the reason behind it because sometimes you may make a good and righteous deed but you rotate around that deed so you do not look at Allah's mercy in the deed you do not look how Allah favored you and made you a Muslim and give you the support to make that deed so you only look at yourself you become arrogant and proud of what you did so you are like a person circumambulating around the Kaaba so you are circumambulating and rotating around your own deed you observe that this is the best and it is perfect so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you rely on yourself and if you have good thought about yourself you will glorify your work or your deed and therefore you will have it nullified and void and it will not reach you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I will give you an example we remember the man who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa his name is Abu Khuaysirah Tamimi and he told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet was given a piece of gold and the people came to be given or to have some of that gold so Abu Khuaysirah said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be just O messenger of Allah can you imagine he says to the Prophet ﷺ, be fair or be just. He doubts the infallibility of the Prophet ﷺ and his honesty. And he's the one who gave out all the money that he has to the companions. So he said, be just a messenger of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if I'm not just, who is going to be fair? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, from the descendants of this man will come some people that you underestimate your prayers if you compare them to their prayers you underestimate your fasting compared to theirs but they will get out of iman or faith like when you are when you shoot an arrow in a game so the arrow goes to the bird and goes from the other direction so the iman entered their their heart but it ran away very fast and it did not establish why what is the reason because he was arrogant and he was proud of what he did this kind of arrogance and pride made the man arrogant to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam because he thought that he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good and a better way on the other side there was a man who was drinking he came to the Prophet sallam and he punished him once, twice, three times. So one of the companions started to curse him. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not curse him. He loves Allah and his messenger. Because the scholar said, A sin which results in humiliation. A person feels humble, submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than a good deed a great good deed that resulted in arrogance and pride my brothers and sisters in islam how to get rid of the sin number one you need to feel that it is something which is humiliating something which makes you very low in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you feel that Allah has rejected, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has neglected you. And if you are honored in the eyes of Allah, He would have actually protected you against the sins. Number two, you, not, you need actually to look through your eyes. 
to the great favors that Allah showers upon you day and night, the great blessings that Allah gives and grants to you and to your family, how you compare those great favors to the sins that you commit and you launch a challenge before your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear from Allah. This is one of the healing remedies that keeps the person away from committing the sin. Some of the people, they feel enthusiastic and they feel proud enough not to humiliate themselves before the others and first and foremost before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need also to be aware of the evil consequences of the sin. One of the righteous ancestors said, I had a sin. Since four years, I'm going back. I cannot go forward in drawing myself closer to the, my Lord. You can imagine four years going around himself because of a sin. Another person said, I forgot the Quran. He used to memorize the Quran simply because of one sin that I committed one day. And a person said, I looked to a woman. I looked to a woman. So I was forced to go on a journey without having an intention or a good intention. You can't imagine that a person can lose a lot because of just committing one sin. One of the righteous ancestors said, when I have just my shoes cut when I'm walking, I know why, what is the reason? I committed a sin because of that. So one of the righteous ancestors commented on this and by saying, they had very little sins, so they know from where they are taken, from where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can punish them. How to get rid of the sins? Briefly, there are constituent elements for the repentance. Number one, you need to be very sincere when you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving up from the sin, giving up and you do not think about it. Number three, you need to blame yourself, shedding the tears when you remember the sins. You resolve that you will never ever come back. Get rid of all the habits and the traditions that keeps you away from giving up those sins. These are the basic constituent elements of repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to give up the sin for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to shower His mercy upon us and to provide us with tranquility and repentance and to grant us with great success in this life and the hereafter. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, you who believe, give charity. For the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan.